Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance. Today is going to be a watch me work. I know it's been a long time since I've done one of these and I'm a little under the weather so my voice is probably going to sound weird and it's probably not going to be a good idea for me to try this on this one for a reason that I'm about to tell you is the main reason why I don't do a lot of these one is it's just really hard for me to film and work at the same time and you know stay efficient and all those things but a lot of times what happens is I'm working in an area around people and I can't really just sit there and talk out loud to myself like I'm talking to you uh, so I haven't really done it because it's just what am I supposed to do if I can't talk during it? So I'm going to try something with this one. I'm going to try, basically, I'm going to film these parts anywhere where I can, and then I'm going to go back and try to do a voiceover over the work. I basically, I'm going to film the work. I've got a new GoPro thing, a hat thing that I'm going to try out and see how that works about the angle and all that stuff. So this is going to be a trial. It may be complete garbage, but you guys can let me know in the comments below how it works out for you and if you, if you like it or not or whatever. Uh, but basically, I have a customer, a commercial customer. They have a women's restroom, pitch dark, lights bad. She basically said, whatever you got to do, if it's a ballast bulbs, whatever it is, if you could just get over there and change it out, that would be great. Uh, so I'm going to go over there and do that. I've already got a ballast for T8, T12. I've got bulbs T8, T12 in my truck. So you're going to probably say, why would you not go ahead and change that out to a LED or even change out to LED bulbs and just get rid of the ballast if that's what it is? Normally, that's what I would do, but this is going to be cheaper for the customer because I've already got the parts in my truck, and then that's going to mean I don't have to make a store trip, and then it's also going to be faster for me to change that out than it's going to be for me to take a light fixture down and put another one up because it's a flush mount, not like a drop-in ceiling light or anything like that. So, again, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to get over there. I'm going to go ahead, and we'll just take the trip over, and then whenever we get there, I'm probably going to start doing voiceover, and we'll just go from there and see how it works. So pulled into the job site here i'm just deciding what all is it that i want to take in as far as what kind of work i might get into so i'm gonna go ahead and take my mp2x it's basically mainly my electrical pouch it's got everything in there that you're going to need to do any kind of electrical work and then obviously i'm going to need a light if the light's out the room's going to be dark so i'm taking in my m12 rover i'm just checking my battery there before i go in and it was a little low plus i'm going to go ahead and change it out to a bigger battery so that that way I know there's not a pretty good chance I'm going to run out of light. It's going to turn dark on me. I'm going to have to come all the way out to my truck just to get another battery. I don't really want to do that. So just getting prepared right here. Now going to the back of the truck just to get out my little ladder. It's an eight foot ceiling in there. Again, I've been in this building several times. So I already kind of know what I was getting into. Uh, this little giant ladder right here. I've got a review for this. This is my favorite ladder it takes up very little room in my truck I can easily get to eight foot ceilings off of it very compact folds up and down easy really good ladder culprit turn on the light seeing what we got you can see a very faint glow showing up there so now I'm gonna go ahead and get up there take the cover off and see what we've got as far as the bulbs see what they look like and the lights are almost flickering a little bit as I'm taking this cover off as if they weren't in the right location so I'm going to move them around. You can actually get the lights to come on, but they're still not right. And you can tell by the color of them uh, that they needed to be replaced. And most people at this point, you might say, well, I'm just going to change the bulbs out. I can tell they're bad and they're coming on. The ballast must be good. Uh, but we'll go ahead and check it because, I'm, again, I'm in my minimum service call anyways. I might as well do my due diligence and find out exactly what's going on with this light because I don't want to... Put in new bulbs and then turn around and you know the next day somebody say well those bulbs keep flickering and going in and out i 
Again, you can tell by looking at these bulbs here in just a second, they're in pretty bad shape. They definitely need to be replaced. This one right here is real bad. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect the power wires, the neutral and the hot, so that I can put my tester on it and test the ballast and see what kind of shape that we're looking at there. So again, I'm just disconnecting the ballast basically. The, the light switch is also off right now, so there's no power to these wires. Putting my alligator clip on the neutral, and I'm gonna set my meter to ohms. And I'm gonna check it at the tombstones and see if there's anything going there. I should have open line, but I don't. So this is telling me that this ballast is also bad right here based upon this testing right here. Going ahead and checking each and every tombstone. So I know it was dark in there. I was using my T6 1000 Pro. It has that light that illuminates, but it was still making it hard to see with the numbers just because it was not a well-lit area. The GoPro doesn't do well in dark areas as well. So I thought I'd go ahead and bring this in. This is the same exact ballast that I just took out of that light fixture uh, that is bad. I was checking it there. I know a lot of times I see people pull it out of the light fixture to check it versus you can just go ahead and leave it hooked up. Do the same thing that I'm about to do with the neutral wire. You wanna take your black test lead alligator clip it onto your neutral wire. I'm using a Wago because I don't have an alligator clip that fits these leads here. And that's a good tip if you, that takes up a lot less room in your tool bag than an alligator clip and it pretty much will clip onto any wire. Uh, so I use Wagos a lot for that. But instead of taking this out and checking these wires, if you go over to those tombstones and stick your other lead on the place where the bulbs go in, it's the same thing as touching those wires. That saves you that time of cutting this out and then having to rewire it if it's good because it might not be bad and then you're going to have to put it back in there and rewire it if that's the case and who wants to spend the time doing that but basically what you're going to do set your meter to ohms you want to be on a thousand or the k ohms we're going to go to that range button and hit that and i'm going to show you it on this one just because the screen's a little bit better on this one uh, in my lighting because the backlight comes on with that one so I'm going to go into a hit range until I see that K ohms right there, which that one auto ranges to that. And basically I'm going to go back and check with my neutral hooked onto the black lead. I'm going to check all the colored wires. I should have open line OL on all of them. If I've got any kind of number whatsoever, that means that this ballast is bad and it needs to be replaced. So if I start with the yellows, it's staying OL. Those are both showing good. I come over here to the blues. I've got 0 0.02, red, 0 0.04, the other red, not that it matters at this point because if you're getting some, you're going to, it's bad no matter what, and then also 0 0.02 on the other blue. So uh, there you go. That's how you test the ballast to see if it's bad. And again, save yourself the time of taking it out of the light fixture. Just check it to those tombstones, put your alligator clip on your neutral run your other lead over to those tombstones and check it. That's what I was doing in the video uh, just to give you a heads up on that. But let's go ahead and get back to the install. So since I know that the ballast is bad, I'm gonna go ahead and get this old one cut out and I'm trying to leave as much wire in the fixture as possible. I like to do that because you never know what you're gonna need. Uh, then it's a matter of just removing the one screw that's holding it in place, sliding it out. And you're gonna see here in just a minute that the replacement part for this one is actually skinnier and longer now, but it still fits in exactly the same. You slide it into that slot and there's even a hole that lines up uh, with the new one uh, as far as where that screw goes. So I'm just using the same screw, getting that mounted in there. And now it's just a matter of getting all the wires stripped up. I'm starting with the yellows here. Again, a wire and a ballast could not be easier. It's color to color. So yellow to yellow, blue to blue, red to red, getting them twisted up, making sure that I got a good connection, getting them trimmed. And again, you'll see me get down and get wire nuts in a little bit. I like to go ahead and do all my work with my strippers while I've got them in my hand, instead of going back and forth, getting out a wire nut for each one. So here I am doing the same exact thing on all the reds, all the blues. Thank you. 
same thing, getting them twisted up. Those are the Knipix Forge wire strippers. Uh, getting down, getting some little blues. Uh, that's pretty much what works on the ballast wires. You get you six little blue wire nuts, counting them out there, getting those put on. Now that all the connections are made, I'm just trying to get all the wires up and out of the way. Uh, plus, I'm going to do a test here in just a second, and it ends up being out of frame. My GoPro moved on me a little bit, but what I'm trying to do here, you can see I've got the neutral wire alligator clipped with the Wago, and what I was doing was going around checking the tombstones again on that new ballast to show you that it says OL on my meter at all times. You're not going to hear any of that beeping and stuff as what you did before and that's basically let me know that this new ballast I put in is showing that it is good and now that I know that it's just a matter of going ahead and getting the neutral wire plugged in again using Wagos for this then putting in that hot pushing those up into the box and now we're just going to finish putting the cover back on making sure all the wires are tucked in and then after this, it's just a matter of putting in the bulbs. We've got two T12 bulbs. Again, it's been a long time since I put in some T12 bulbs. These were a little bit of a tight fit. It's kind of hard to get inside the actual fixture itself. But you're going to see the light come on as I get this last one twisted in. Now it's just a matter of putting that diffuser on and getting everything buttoned up, getting everything picked up, cleaned up, and back in my truck. So yeah guys, that was pretty much straightforward. It was a bad ballast, bad bulb. So I went ahead and got both of those changed out. And again, that's probably not something that we're gonna do that much anymore. Uh, I don't know how often you guys run into it still, but pretty much most of the time, I always try to talk that customer into just going ahead and changing it out and convert it to an LED fixture. Uh, even especially if the fixture's old and all that stuff, just because really the cost of the ballast and the bulbs, you spend maybe double and get yourself a fixture, but it's going to last a lot longer. You're not going to have to deal with the ballast and all that stuff anymore. But again, this is one of those where I just had to get it done as cheap as possible, get in and get out. I was able to fit it within my minimum service call as far as my time. And again, I already had the materials, so that saved that trip, which is allowed, what allowed me basically to stay within that minimum and to help this customer out and to get him, get him some light, get him going. So that's why I went that route. Uh, again, that's not necessarily something that we're probably going to run into that much anymore. They've got tools that you can even stick up and check ballast. Uh, without having to go through the whole meter aspect of it nowadays, but there's no sense to me in spending the money on that because it's just something that's going out. Uh, we're not going to deal with it quite as much as what we used to. But again, let me know in the comments below what you think about the GoPro. I know I probably lost a little bit of the footage because at one point in time I saw where it got tilted back in a different way. And then let me know what you think about the voiceover because if I can do that, I might could do a little bit more of these pretty often. Uh, probably still not going to be real often because it's still time consuming no matter what to just get it all set up and do all those things. But again, hope it was useful in some way. Let me know in the comments below what you think. But as always, you guys stay safe. Have a blessed day. See you on the next video.